We are watching you. Do not be afraid. It will all be over soon. We are watching you. We are watching you. We are watching you. Do not be afraid. It will all be over soon. responsible for these incidents remain unknown. Radio, radio rentals, you know, radio rentals are the biggest rental company in Australia. One of the largest furniture retailing and manufacturing organizations in Victoria. Remove the false plate. You can paint it or wallpaper it to suit your room. On January 3rd, 2007, Viewers in Australia were in for a surprise when they tuned in to an episode of the Canadian documentary Mayday Head on Collision on Channel 7. The program which highlighted air travel disasters took a bizarre turn as an eerie message suddenly replaced the original audio. As local residents watched in confusion, a voice began to repeatedly utter the unsettling words, Jesus Christ. Help us all, Lord. For approximately six minutes, the voice persisted before inexplicably vanishing, leaving viewers across the country unsettled by the strange interference. After numerous attempts from viewers and news outlets to reach Channel 7 for some sort of explanation, they finally issued a response. This is what they had to say. There was a technical glitch due to an audio problem with the tape. The line actually is Jesus Christ, one of the Nazarenes, and this is from the documentary. Viewers were quick to point out that it's very obvious that the voice is in fact saying, Jesus Christ, help us all, Lord, and not Jesus Christ, one of the Nazarenes, as claimed by the station. Also, the audio was found to not exist anywhere within the original documentary. So why did Channel 7 dodge the truth? Help us all, Lord. Jesus Christ, 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 help us all, Lord. Was someone trying to cover up their mistake? Perhaps a rogue employee managed to sneak in the audio, and the station was reluctant to admit their security breach. 
Another theory suggests that a mysterious outside source hijacked the airwaves and added the audio over the broadcast. But why? The best explanation that can be offered is that it was added to make some sort of political or religious statement, though what exactly that is remains unknown. The actual message itself is unsettling enough on its own. It feels almost like it may be some sort of warning or precursor to some horrible event, but again, we may never truly know. One mystery in this story was actually solved by some resourceful viewers, as they actually tracked down the original source of the audio. This discovery does contradict the statement released by Channel 7 in their attempt to explain the strange situation, further proving their dishonesty about it all. Though we now know where the audio came from, the motive behind its use is still shrouded in uncertainty. In April of 2005, a man by the name of Preston Wheeler, heavily burdened by finances, accepted a high-paying truck driver position that required him to work in Iraq, driving between multiple military bases. The pay was excellent, unlike anything he was previously accustomed to, allowing him to find some freedom from his financial burdens back home. Though all this extra money would come at a dangerous cost. During runs, soldiers were armed with guns and drivers were left defenseless. Usually only a knife or blunt object to protect themselves, and the odds of being ambushed in between bases was high. Wheeler lived on Camp Anaconda, a makeshift town where his company operated, 65 miles north of Baghdad. He was originally tasked with driving a refrigerated truck on convoy runs every couple days, allowing him to stay safely in his base in between runs. However, Wheeler was soon moved to a position that required him to leave the base daily, now putting him at at least double the risk of being attacked in between bases. On the morning of September 20th, 2005, Wheeler and a few other drivers were set to head to forward operating base McKenzie, located about 45 minutes away. They were told they'd be back in time for lunch. With the extra money he had been making from his job, he purchased a $600 digital camera and he decided today would be a good day to try out its video mode. As he left Anaconda, he began to record his view driving down the dusty road. At some point, the military navigator guiding the convoy to their destination accidentally directed the line of trucks down the wrong road. The convoy passed through Adulia, a town about halfway to Camp Mackenzie. They rolled down the middle of the street past markets and homes 
as locals paused at the roadside to watch. This is where this story takes a dark turn. Locals begin hurling rocks at the convoy, shattering windows and damaging vehicles, though no one was seriously injured. As the line of trucks made it away from this area, they made the sudden realization that the road was a dead end and that they'd have to go back through the town past the locals to get to the main road again. As they rolled back through the town, no one could be seen, the streets suddenly empty and eerily silent. Suddenly, the loud cracking of gunfire rang out through these empty streets as a bullet can be heard flying through Wheeler's windshield, narrowly missing his head. The convoy was sent into a panic as they desperately tried to escape this horrifying situation, now speeding through the town. Things then took a turn for the worst when the lead driver at the front of the convoy, Christopher Lem, was shot in the neck and killed as his truck overturned, blocking the road. Shortly after this, Wheeler's truck was hit with an RPG near the trailer hitch, ultimately rendering the vehicle useless, trapping Wheeler with nowhere to run from the rain of gunfire. Hey, no, let's go. Guys, you got to go. We got to go. Come on now. Truck five is down and cannot look like I'm getting shot. While trying to process the full gravity of the situation, Wheeler noticed four men in the distance approaching truck number three, which had also been immobilized. This truck was being driven by a man named Sasha Grenner Case, who was coaxed out of the vehicle by these men before being executed in the street. on to truck number four directly ahead of Wheeler who was in truck five and sprayed numerous bullets into the cab, also killing truck four's driver, Kevin Daggett. You okay, Daggett? Okay, trucks are coming by the three-way jumping one. Okay, keep your head on your shoulders, all right? After witnessing this, Wheeler turned off his camera before two bullets flew into his truck, both striking his arm. Clutching onto his knife, waiting to die, the men began to approach his truck. He recalls hearing them laugh as they slowly made their way over, but as they approached, army helicopters suddenly appeared in the sky, sending them running and ultimately saving Wheeler's life. The voice on the strange broadcast was that of Preston Wheeler as the attack on his convoy begins. We're in a state of panic and acceptance that this may be his last day on earth. He utters these words. Jesus Christ, help us all, Lord. 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 Jesus Christ, 